Jonathan Edwards! What do you want? Mrs. Edwards, I know I ask you this like every week, but would you like to ride to church with me? Oh, come on, Mrs. Edwards, you'll like my church. We have some hot music. It may not be what you're bumping at all, but it's hot. We get down. What do you say, Mrs. Edwards? Oh, I suppose. I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <sighs> okay, here we are. Hallelujah. So that's your assignment for this week. <laughs> Go out and invite somebody to the house of the Lord. It's going to be good. You guys doing good this morning? Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah 29. We'll start with chapter, verse 11, chapter 29, verse 11. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you this morning. We just thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify your name, Jesus, for your holy. Father, we thank you for your people here today. God, we thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for that good measure of blessing, Lord, that's going to be distributed out today in this congregation of people, in this body today. Father, we thank you for a people that is on fire for you, a people that are in love with you, a people that needs relationship with you, a people, God, that wants to join and partner up with what you're doing in this city, in this region, in this state, Father. God, we thank you right now for a people who know who they are. Father, a people who know what their objective is and what they're supposed to do, what they need to do, what their calling is. Father, we thank you for a prayerful people. A people who want to partner up with everything that you have for them. A people that know how to love. A people who know their identity. A people who know what it is to be free. A people who have had an encounter with you, Jesus. That personal encounter, we just thank you this morning, God, that you were moving that way. A people full of life. A people full of life. So we thank you, God, this morning for that calling, for the blessings. Jesus, for the price that you paid for us. to walk in that each day of our lives because people are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord today. I'm excited for you guys. Listen, I'm excited for what God's going to do in your lives and in the weeks to come. We have Mother's Day coming up. Pretty quick it's going to come on us, and then after that, Father's Day, and I'm today at the end of my message, which is short. I'm going to give you a challenge, um, a four-week challenge. But I want to get into this first. I want to read, uh, starting with verse 11. In verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future of hope. 
Remember last week, if you were here, we talked about lights and we talked about, I think it was last week, and we talked about how much power God has and how much light that he operates out of. It's a fullness of light where there's no darkness at all within the light. There is zero darkness in the light of God. And we talked about, I'm recapping here a minute. We talked about the plans that he has for you, the things that he has for you, the things that you've went through in life. If you think God has caused them, then whatever it is, is full of light. There is no darkness in it. There cannot be any darkness in any of the plans that God has for you. If there's darkness in the midst of the light, it's because you have opened the door to bring that darkness in. And Jesus wants you again to get centered up with him, and that way all darkness disappears out of your life where you know that you know that you know who he is. And then this verse, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He knows how much he wants you to have that intimate relationship with him, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. He's thinking thoughts of peace for you and for me. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. If there's evil in your life or if there's things going on in your life that are on the dark side, they're not coming from God. They're coming from the dark side. He thinks peace for you. Have you ever been in a peaceful situation? I love being in a peaceful situation, but I've been on the other side, and I've been in some pretty dark situations in my life. I know the difference between peace, and I know the difference between the darkness. I've experienced both. I like the peace better. It kind of complements me better. It complements God better, that peace side. He does not want evil for you, but he wants peace for you. And he says, that I give you a future of hope. If you think that your future does not have hope in it, go to this verse because this is what God is thinking for you. The hope in your life, the hope that he has for you. And I could go to so many verses on that and I'm going to keep it simple today. But there's hope for you and it comes through him. It comes through the peace that Jesus offers. It comes through what he has for you. That hope comes from him. And in that scripture, this is the part in the scripture that you know, and there's some of you have already walked, I'm going to do stage one, knowing that God is who he says he is. Stage two is salvation. Stage three is pressing in and getting everything that God has for you. But stage one, I want to stop there for a moment, because stage one is where most of you should be by now in your walk with Christ. You should know that. You should have already been through stage two and three, and you're working on three, grabbing everything that God has for you. But in stage one, there's something about stage one of knowing who God is, knowing that peace in your life, because when you do, when you do, there's going to be people that are watching you and they're seeing every move you make and they're seeing everything that you do. And they're going to come to Christ because of you. And they're going to walk away from Christ because of you. What side do you want to be on? There are people that are literally watching every move you make to say, whether they want to come into that peace or not. Because when you, what you call peace, they might see is turmoil. When you think that you're walking in peace and you're living outside of that peace and you are deceived and walking, thinking you're walking in peace, there's people out watching what's going on. That's why we have to watch every move we make, every step we take because of that. There are people watching you. They need to know that you are who you say you are. They need to know that you are the the Christian that you say you are. You're either going to turn them to him or away from him. It's just evident. I remember a time watching this young man here running the streets with drugs in a backpack, running the streets on a little 16-inch bicycle, pedaling down the rope, this little jam box on the front. He saw something in somebody and said, you know, I've got to have that. 
I'm tired of living this and I got to have that. So by him seeing somebody, he sought after that somebody to get to the somebody that he really needed to know, which is Jesus Christ. But he sought after somebody first to get to the somebody he really needed to know. And that somebody was solid in foundation, solid in identity, solid in who God was in them. Because it drew him in to the point to where people are now looking at him saying, what did he do? What does he have that I don't have? He went from the streets to being a thug on the streets. And that's what he was, a thug on the streets. To being a son of God. To be in inheriting the kingdom of God. And people are watching and they're watching and they're watching and they watch him. They're still watching him. They're still watching him. I was watching him the other day driving down the road like a thug. And I said, Cody, Cody, slow your roll. Let people get in front of you. Quit trying to get in front of everybody driving down the road. And he was driving like a thug. And I said, is that Cody? Sure enough, it was Cody. So we had a conversation about the thug driving later, you know, the, you know, um, I said, old things pass away, all things become new, man. That's one of those things that pass away and becomes new in your life. So I believe he's dr driving differently now because his wife's been telling him that forever since he got his license back a couple months ago. And um, the, his wife has been telling him that. And then finally she said, well, you're going to have to be the one to tell him because he'll, he'll listen to you. You tell him. I told him. Quit driving like a thug. You're not a thug. Pull your britches up. Drive like a man of God, a son of God, a child of God. And he is. He took my advice. But this is the first part of it. You have to be walking in that light. And if you're not walking in that light as he is in the light, you're walking with some measure of darkness. And in that darkness, people see that. They know it's not pure. They know what it's like not to be pure. Even though the drugs lie to them and they're, they're believing the lie through the drugs that they're taking, they really know deep down there's, there's, there's a lie in the midst of that. They want something better and they want something different. But it's going to be because they see you and they want that in you. Jesus is sitting down on the right hand of God. God is sitting down on his throne. He never got up off his throne. He sat on his throne and he called angel out to do his bidding, to do his work. He stayed on the throne. God is still on the throne. He's calling you and I to do his bidding, to do his work. Jesus came to give us an example on what it is like to do that. To know that God, Jesus said, I know my father and know what he would do in every situation. We should be the same way to know God in that same way. Because when we do that, second, this verse, number 12 says, then they will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to them. So now because you have lived your life according to God, getting everything out of the way, all the struggles and the battles, and I know we still have things in our life that God is showing us, but the main things in our life, the main struggle and battle is getting Satan behind us and pushing forward to the things of God in our identity and our walk. When we do that, people now are going to look at us and they're going to say, I want that. What do I got to do? Then they will call out upon me, his name, Jesus, and go and pray to him and he will listen to them. And Psalms 50, 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God says you will glorify me when you call out in your days of trouble because he wants to deliver you. His heart is to deliver you. His heart is to see you free from the bondage of sin. His heart is to see you free because he loves for you. He loves you and he wants to see those things. Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not even know. God wants to show you so many things that you don't even know. He will give you the answers. His heart is to give you the answers. Daniel 9.3 says, 
Then I set my face toward the Lord God and make my requests, prayers, and supplications with fasting, and sackcloth, and ashes. When we stay in the light, when we stay centered, people are attracted to that. They are attracted to that. Some of you have lived lives that will draw people to where you were and to where you are now. Some people live those kind of lives. Some people have those kind of testimonies that they've lived such a horrible life and people have seen that and they've went from that horrible to where they are. People are seeing that now. And they're like, man, what did you do? How can I get to where you are? And that'll bring him to the point of praying and calling out on the name of Jesus. And he said, I will listen. I will hear and then it says, and you will seek me, and you will find me. This is part three. After you're saved, after you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins to live in your life. It says, in 13, it says, and you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all your heart. And I want to give this other version of this because I love this whole passage in this other version. This is really cool. This is the message version. And listen, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, there's some versions out there that, that when you know God, listen, when you know God, your Lord God, and you're reading a certain version, you'll know if something's not right, if something's not clicking in that version. Don't just go with it. If, you, if God says, that, that's not how I said that, that's okay. Skip over that and move. Because there, the enemy, you don't think the enemy's trying to move in, in writing the Word of God? <laughs> he is trying to move in writing the Word of God. He's trying to change things around and dilute things and make it, make it what he wants it to make it. So some of, these, some of these people can do whatever they want to do and choose what they want to do. But listen, this is the message version. It says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans that take care of you and not to abandon you. Most, most people, and I've experienced abandonment in my life. But he says, I, I'll take care of you. I have plans for you. I won't abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. God wants to give you the future that you've hoped for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I will listen. And I like this part. It says, when you come looking for me, you'll find me, yes. When Listen, you'll come looking for me, you'll find me, yes. When you get serious about finding me. And want it more than anything else in the world. Then make sure, then make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree says that. And I will turn things around for you. That's the God that we serve. He wants to grab a hold. Listen, we can clap. Let's clap for Jesus. Go ahead. Some of you clapping, some of you not. You don't know. You feel awkward. Like, should I clap? Should I not? I mean, act like no one's around. When you want to clap, you clap. When you want to shout, you shout. Act like no one's around. Act like you're at a ball game and no one can even hear what you're saying. Or in the bathroom, singing in the shower, no one can hear. Shout it out. Hallelujah, because he's good. He's worthy of our praise, all of our praise. Even in the midst of a crowd that might look at you and go, why are they clapping like that? Or why are they doing that? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to embarrass yourself for Jesus. Because I don't care. So if we, if we know who he is, we know that he is light and in him is no darkness, then we know that no matter what we go through in life, we know that, that if, if he's a part of it, there's no darkness in it. If he's a part of it, it's right and not wrong. He's always right. In every situation, every time. Understand that. And when you start living that and you, you live your life out like that, people are going to watch you. And when they watch you, they're going to come and they're going to say, what do you have that I don't have? You're going to say, I have Jesus Christ. Would you like to know him? Therefore, this is part of that first scene. When you roll up on someone's house and you roll up on them, 
and you're playing your Christian music and they're playing their whatever music and you roll up and you invite them to church. See, we're afraid. I think we're really afraid that people are going to say no. We, and when we come up to them, I don't care who it is. I'll invite them to church. I don't care. I mean, I've had my, I've had my waitresses at the restaurant pray, pray for our meal. I put them on the spot say, would you pray for our meal? They're like, uh, um, uh, you said you're a Christian. Will you pray for our meal? Uh, and they do. I love it. I love it. Put people on the spot. But when you do that, tip them good. Tip them good. Always tip them good anyhow, like 100% every time. If you don't tip 100%, don't go out to eat. You watch what it does. Watch what it does to people. I mean, it trips them up when you do that. When you just give sacrificially, it's like, man, I'm just going to bless you and give. I look for people in the store. Like, I look for people to buy their groceries. I literally walk through the store. I'm like, God, can I buy somebody's groceries today? Just like, I look for stuff like opportunities like that just to bless people because I want to see them come to the knowledge of Christ through, through a lifestyle living for him. But when you just live that kind of a life, when you put your grocery cart up at the, at the store, people are watching that. They're like, well, why does he put his grocery cart up? What? I mean, they hire people to do that. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And people start looking at you doing the right things. They're like, why do they do that? Why do they just like tithe like that? Why, 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 do, they, why, why do they tithe? Why do they give? Why do they bless me when I'm, when I, when I'm serving them food? Why do, they, why do they do things like that? And these are signs that make people wonder. And when they wonder, they want answers to why they're, they're wondering. And so they wonder about it. And you can introduce them to Christ. And you get, you'll get more opportunities introducing people to Christ if you're centered up with Him. And then it says, when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. And He will give you the answers God wants to give you the answers. There's the, all the things that you struggle with in Scripture, and you say, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. God does not want to keep those things locked from you. He wants you to know the answers to those. But you have to walk accordingly in His will. Center up with Him. Shed darkness off your life, and He's going to start revealing the answers to you. And so this, this comes into this. That's, that's part one of my message How many of you like taking trips? Anybody like taking trips? I love traveling. I love traveling. I love taking trips. How many of you like being able to take your kids with you? How many of you would love to have the whole family go on a trip like everybody? It's like we're just going to take the whole family, like all paid for, paid vacation for the whole family, like everybody across the board. It doesn't matter. Moms, dad, grandma, grandpa, everybody. They're alive. They're coming. You might have to find your own place to stay and get away from them every now and then. But if they're alive, they're coming on this trip. I want to take a trip with you all. But there's a problem because this bus that we're getting ready to load up, each week some of you are here and some of you are not here. So I'm going to have to recap this every week until Mother's Day. Okay, because there's some people here and there's some people not here. It's like taking a trip, you know, when you go on a trip and um, someone has to go to the restroom. You know, you're all right, we're trying to get, dad's trying to get going. Mom wants to get there and you got to stop at the restaurant or restroom so someone can go to the restroom. You stop at the restroom, they linger, you take off, forget about them. They're back behind. They figure out a way to get to you. Just like Jesus left back behind, they all took off on the trip going back home and Jesus is back in the city. He didn't miss nothing because he's God. But what happens is we take the trip in corporately as a church, we're taking this trip and we're looking at this ma magnificent sight and the people that wasn't here that day or missed the bus because they were at the bathroom or ball game, they, they missed that part of the trip. They missed that glorious part of the trip that they needed that encounter because that's when their encounter was. It's almost like the enemy will strategically jump into people's lives because of open doors and keep them away from the blessings that God has for them. But this is what I want to do. So I want to challenge. I want everyone on the bus every time the bus leaves for the next week. So I want you on the bus the Sunday after Mother's Day. So Mother's Day, hopefully you're all here for Mother's Day, honor our mothers. Um, so I'm kind of 
playing with this because then Father's Day is at the end of it. So hopefully you all show up for Father's Day to honor fathers. But there's four weeks in between. The four weeks in between, I want to get on the bus together in the spirit realm, and I want to take a journey together because I feel like some of you have missed out on the journey that we have and where we're going, what life of love is all about, the importance of us being here in this city. Yes, there's a lot of churches here, and they're doing a lot of great work, but there's a specific reason that God has us in this region, in this city. And in those four weeks, we're going to have donuts and coffee outside here, and we're going to fellowship out here in the morning around 9.30, probably 9 o'clock you can come, and we'll just fellowship outside around the hallways. Back in here, we'll have this set up and ready. And then at 10 o'clock, there's going to be prayer in here in a sanctuary, and we're going to come together, we're going to pray together. And then we'll just keep you for an hour and a half after that, 11 to 12.30, and then we'll cut it right at 12.30, and then you'll get to go home. Four weeks is all I'm asking. Then you guys can go wherever you want to go after the four weeks. But I believe in the four weeks you're going you're gonna to find something in yourself. You're going to find some growth. You're going to find some desire. You're going to find what God wants for you in those four weeks. We're going to talk about love in those four weeks. Love. There we go. Hallelujah. Thank you, production team. We're going to talk about love, what it means to love, what love looks like. An untainted version of love, what it looks like. Then we're going to talk about identity. For you to know your identity and get solidly grounded in your identity, who you are in Christ. Not who you are in the world, not who you are in your job, not who you are in anything else but other than Christ and how he dreamed of you before the foundation of the earth to be. We're going to talk about freedom. Some of you have been bound and are still bound with things of the world, still bound up with things that that you could be so easily set free from, but yet you're holding on to those things for whatever reason, for whatever lie that you're believing to hold on to those things that I still have to be bound to this. No, when you got saved, Jesus freed you of all things once and for all. If you're bound, it's because you're keeping yourself bound. It's like the old man at the one of these theme parks I went to, there was an old man standing there, and he was behind the bars, and he'd been there so long that the door had fallen off and was hanging off of the, the jail, and he could have gotten out of the jail because the door was hanging off, but he was still standing there behind the bars, not recognizing that he was free already. So we're going to learn about freedom, and then we're going to learn about encounters, If you have not encountered Jesus by this fourth week, you will encounter Jesus. You will encounter everything that he has for you. You will have a supernatural encounter. I'm believing for this. This is my prayer for this day, even up to the the days up to this, that you will have such an encounter with Jesus that it will change you forever. The salvation is one thing. The sanctification is another thing. The consecration is another thing. But the encounter with God is what I really need for you to have because when you have that encounter, you'll see yourself how Jesus sees you. And when you see yourself how he sees you and not how you see yourself in the mirror, it'll change everything for you. It'll change everything for you. I remember one day looking in the mirror. Years ago, I was at Calvary Chapel Church where um, where I was I, I was I was driving my truck, and I got ready to pull out, and I looked in the mirror, and I just saw ugly. I just said, man. And I didn't even want to look in the mirror anymore. Now I look in the mirror, I'm like, beautiful. God, you created me, man. I saw what, I saw how you see me. I'm excited about that person. I look in the mirror, and I, and I do, and I decree those things, man. I'm like, man, you are awesome. You are amazing. God loves you so much, man. Man, you are powerful. Look at you. Shelly be like, who are you talking to? Just look at you, man. You're just like stunning. Your bald head. It's okay to be bald. 
your shaggy beard. It's okay. God dreamed of you before the, man, you are awesome. You walk out and you're all fired up. I love it. Do it sometime. It just it fires you up because it's truth. When you speak that, when you look in the mirror and you speak that, you're speaking that what God sees you, how he sees you, how he wants you to see yourself. Man, when you see that, nobody's going to tear you down and say you're ugly, you're fat, you're too tall, you're too short. No one's going to be able to say that because that's not true. It might be in your physical body, but it's not true in who you really are. So we're going to learn about encounters, how we can encounter everything that God wants. And in all of that, we're going to learn how to live life. Life, love, identity, freedom, encounter. And this is the four pillars that this church is built off of. As we love on the people in this region, they will find their identity and their freedom to fully encounter everything that God has for them. Four weeks. A four-week commitment. So now what we're going to do, this was short. We got, we got, I mean, now we're only like 12 after. We're good. We're good. Now this is, the, this is the hard part. Apologize. I've been battling a cold this past 90 days, seems like. But I've, I've, I'm, I'm victorious over it. I'm looking in the mirror and say, you don't have a cold, man. You don't, have, you don't have nothing. You know, I look in the mirror, I just like, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's dried up. It's dry. There's nothing in you. It's dried up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Just believe it. Walk it out. Walk it out. Co- Cody will text me. He'll say, walk it out, man. Walk it out. I speak healing over you. Walk it out. Thank you, Cody, for those texts. But I've got a promissory note up here. Anybody ever signed a promissory note? This is, this is where it gets sticky. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for anything other than that you guys just commit. Do we have some for the other side, Fayetta? Okay. Everybody's going to go to that side. This, this is all I'm asking. Listen, you got Mother's Day, you got four weeks, and you got Father's Day. This says, I am agreeing to purpose to be here in person at Life of Love for four straight Sundays between Mother's Day, Sunday, and May 12, 24, through Father's Day, Sunday, June 16th through 24. I'm not asking you to be here on Mother's Day or Father's Day because I'm not going to start the series until, and listen, for me to start a series is like a miracle in itself. No, I'm, sh- I'm serious. Because right now I have no idea what we're talking about next week. I'll know maybe Monday I'll have a word Monday. God will give me a word and I will chew on that and I'll chew on that. And you know when you chew on something it starts getting bigger and bigger, you know, like gum or some bad meat, you know, it's like with your fat in it, you chew on it, it just keeps getting swelling up in your mouth. Well, that's why I'm not chewing on that stuff and it gets bigger and bigger. And then I have to pull it out and start seeing, okay, what do you want to do? He starts giving me things that he wants to do for that Sunday. But I, but I've, <laughs> this is, this is going to be a challenge for me too, to actually right now build four messages in the future for, for life of love. I do have four words, love, identity, freedom, encounter to build off of and to chew on. So I at least got to start on every one of them. So hallelujah. Thank you God for that, that he gave me years ago. And how I got those words were, we were driving down the road, I believe we were driving to Terre Haute, Indiana, and um, we, it doesn't matter, we were driving to Miss Shelley. We were just driving, and someone called and said, hey, you need to come up with four pillars. This is for the ministry ever started. You know, and we, and we talked about um, the water and what the water means to us. You know, we didn't even know anything about the water. Shelly and I were riding away from Florida where we were supposed to be, where we were not supposed to be, but we were going to be. Riding that wave to Martinsville, which ties into the oasis that you were talking about. And we'll share that over coffee, but but not you, Cody, behind you. And so, um, 
And so this all ties together, this wave theme. So if you see a surfboard out front, the surfboard is just part of that wave. It's what Shelly and I rode in on, and then we hung it up on the wall for you all to see what we rode in on. And they said, come up with four pillars instantly, almost instantaneously. Like, like instant, the Lord said, life, love. I, I mean, this was almost instant. I mean, I don't know if I've ever had a word dropped in me this fast after someone spoke something to me. Love, identity, freedom, encounter, life. As you love on the people in this region, show them their identity. It'll bring them freedom to fully encounter everything God has for them. Instantly that was there. So that's for you guys. That's what you guys get to experience. That's what you guys get to grab a hold of. And there's going to be a lot of chewing going on um, during this session because... We're going to learn this stuff together. I'm going to learn some new things. I'm going to learn some new things as well. And I'm going to walk in some new things as well. I'm not fully there. And we won't be until we meet Jesus and we step into that heavenly place is when we will fully be transformed. Until then, we're still molding and shaking things off. God's still moving in us and showing us. So this says, I agree to purposely be here in person at Life of Love for straight four Sundays. Man, that's going to be a challenge for some between Mother's Day and Father's Day. All right, so this is the, this is the challenge right here. I am going to, do you have a pen? I'm, I'm going to sign this. Shelly, will you be here? Will you sign this? So we, us as your leaders, we're going to sign this. Now, I'm not si- yeah. Randy, you and Carly are going to be here. Will you guys sign this? Dave, Faye, Uwe. You see them coming up. Listen, drop it in. Drop it in the. Drop it in the offering. Offering, or just um, leaving them up here. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Just drop them somewhere. And uh, promise. Listen. You're, you're just, I, I, I did this because you're before witnesses right now, and you're just promising to be here. I mean, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be for the growth of life of love. I, I, I believe what the Lord is saying, that we're getting ready to expand, we're getting ready to grow, and this is going to be part of it. Come and join us for the breakfast. Come and join us for corporate prayer. Come and join us for the word. Don't everybody have to get up at once. I'm just grateful. And this is the thing. You guys know the ones who are not here today that will be here next week or the week after. You guys know who they are. Go to them. Call them. Get them. Get them this promissory note. I mean, make it big deal for them. I mean, make it seem like they're going to be handed the world as soon as that last Sunday. They're going to be. Man, and I, there might be a gift. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Gift of the Holy Spirit. Man, you guys all might get baptized in the Holy Spirit. We'll have a holy rolling moment. Everybody together. I believe it's going to happen. I'm going to have the pool open all four of those weeks. At the end of the sessions, the pool will be open. So if any time you want to get in the pool after the, each session, the pool will be open for you to jump in and grab healing, to grab sealing whatever God's doing in your heart, whatever he showed you that day to shed off those things. Going to be kind of like the altar. Bring a change of clothes. If you don't have a change of clothes, we might have those available. Commitment is what we need. This region is bad about commitment. People I've watched across the line, people will start out big, and they all start out big, but then they, then they gradually fall off. 
with every restaurant, with everything. And we're, we want to break those things off today, that kind of stigma on this region that um, it, 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 people are great to start out. And then even, even listen, even, even the classes that we've been doing, the um, foundations classes, people are quick to get started with it. Yeah, I want to learn about foundations. And then it's like week two, man, I have to get out of bed to do that. Maybe I don't want to learn about foundations. And then you got a teacher that's teaching. He's like all pumped up, excited, prayed up and everything. And all of a sudden, nobody shows up. How would you like for nobody to show up to your party? That would stink. Randy and Carlene, when they're, when they're over there, they have a, they're having a party. They're like, man, it's, like, it's going to be packed today. Five minutes till the one person shows up. Then two straggles in. But they still pour their whole heart into it. It's for the one. If it was just for the one. It, Kevin, did you sign that, brother? I bless you. I am so, I've so missed my brother Kevin. Man, those photo, the photographic, the shots that he takes is just so dynamic. That's a calling. That's a super, super calling, Kevin, that you have. Get one right now. Get one of me right now. Why? It's because God says I'm beautiful and I'm amazing and I'm all that he said I am. We can have a confidence. Listen, we can have a confidence. Where we lack confidence, we can have a confidence that says, man, I am, I am who he says I am. But if you don't know who he says you are, there's that confidence. You're lacking that confidence. Hallelujah. All right. I'll quit early. Five minutes. Anybody else want to sign the promissory note? You got, you got a couple more weeks to sign all the way up to Mother's Day. To sign it. Even if you sign it on Mother's Day, you're still making that promise. Think about it. Check your schedules. Just check your schedules and make sure you can fit him in those four weeks. I'm just, just make sure it works. No, I know people have got already some people might have stuff already planned they can't get out of. I understand that. That's no condemnation at all. Um, I just want the core group of people really to grab a hold of what we're doing here and so they can um, they can transform. Everybody wants new things. Everybody wants to be blessed to the fullest of the blessing that God has for them. I mean, I don't want just 10 bucks. I want 10,000 bucks. I, you know, and some people are walking just accepting the 10 bucks and that's all they take. But I want, I want all of it. $10 million, $10 trillion. The government spends it like that. Like God can too. Quadrillion. Does anybody need to pray today? Is there anybody here that do that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? I know we have plenty of things to pray for and pray about, but is there anybody here that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? But if you don't, today's a great day to come into that salvation. You can walk with us on this journey and be filled up all the way. I'm not going to linger long. Okay. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for today. We just glorify you, Lord. You know your people. You know every one of them. You know their hearts, Father. You know even if they're not saved right now, God, and they stayed back in their seat. They're pondering all these things. God, you know who they're watching. They might be watching some person in here. They might be watching somebody and saying, I just want to see how they're going to walk. I just want to see if they were going to sign that paper. Because if they're not going to sign it, what is it? There might have been somebody here like that, seeing what you're going to do. The Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are moving in their lives, regardless of who they're watching right now. God, that they're sitting in the presence right now. They're watching you and what you're doing right now in this moment. So we thank you for that. We glorify you. We magnify you, Jesus, for you're holy, 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 and worthy of all praise and all glory. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. We'll see you Wednesday for prayer.